There's one guys right there. There we go. Two at a time, folks. Look at this. Look at that, guys. I'm just gonna take my net here. Oops. There's one and there's two. Look there, folks. Doubled up on them, that one. Look at here. One, one crappie. Right there. Bubba. Terrible guys. Right there, can't beat that. Crappie at dust, folks. I tell you what, it's awesome. Once that light starts going down, you got about a two-hour window, and that's what we're working with. Trying to bust the show out in two hours, getting crappie in the evening. You folks stay tuned. Experience is proudly sponsored by Crestliner, leader by innovation. Mercury Marine, number one on the water. Sidewinder planer boards, fight the fish, not the board. Easy loader boat trailers, all boat trailers are not created equal. Cobler Marina, one stop boat shop. Setter rods, the American way. Pro Fish, quality fish taxidermy. That is second to none. And AX Tackle. Tackle that will give you the edge. There we go. There we go, guys. Look at there's another one. Folks, what we're doing here, swinging in here, if I keep him on. What a big fish, we'll take him. What we're doing here, we're out here basically after work. It's about 6.30, nice fish. And what we're doing is we're trying to catch this two hour window when these crappie just go crazy. We've had the 100 degree heat for what seems like a month and a half. And these crappie just don't do much feeding during the daytime, but there is a, a window right before dusk where they just go absolutely crazy. And that's what we're trying to capitalize on. What we're doing, we're sitting in about 20 feet of water right now. And we're fishing these big, tall cabbage beds. And these cabbage beds are only about two or three feet underneath the surface and they're going all the way up from the bottom. What we're doing is hitting the edge. And these crappie are just going on a feed right now. Right there, guys, see that? Just like that. Once you, uh, that's a good one right there, guys. That's a nice fish right there. I'm gonna grab, I'm grab him here. What you wanna do, a lot of people come out crappie fishing in the middle of the day, and crappie, oh, that's a good one, guys. Crappie are a low light feeder. They're kinda like a walleye, and they like to do a low light feed. Nice fish. And that's what we're trying to do here. We're just trying to capitalize on this. We're gonna actually try to build a show here in literally about two hours. So we're gonna see if we can get it done. Just to show you folks at home, when you get off of work, you get off at 5.30, 6 o'clock, hook up the boat, you can come out and just get into some excellent crappie fishing. Just kind of speed fishing, see what we can do. There's one guys right there. All right, bad little fish. See how some of these fish, folks, some of them are on the upper, some of them are on the lower. And I've got them spread out over about two feet. I got the drop shot weight down on the bottom. I'm coming up a foot to my first hook, and then I'm about 14 to 16 inches to my next hook, a little small fella. But what, the reason why I do that is just because of the schooling, the way they school, they can be spread all the way up to the surface. These ones I'm seeing darting around, they're quite a ways up. So I'd be fishing below them. So this just puts me in the strike zone all the way down through the water column, covering about three feet of water. What we're doing here, when you get in this big tall cabbage like this, 
One of the mistakes that people make is they want to make a big long cast. You don't want to make a great big long cast. All I did, that's about 15 yards out there. Because what happens, there's a fish right there, guys. What happens when you make a big long cast like that, you get all wound up in that cabbage. All I'm trying to do, see, now that last fi f uh, fish, folks, was on the, the lower one. See this one here, he's on the upper one. That just keeps me in, the, in the, the strike zones all it's doing. But getting back to the casting thing again, little fella, what happens when you make a big long cast, you're gonna end up fighting the weeds. All I wanna do is take this rig and just kinda snake it through those weeds. So don't make big long casts. I, I know where the edges are. We've got two pockets here. We've got a pocket coming like this, where my marker buoy is at the center, and then I got a pocket coming like this. So all I'm doing, just a little underhand toss, 15, 20 yards out there. I don't get tangled up in the weeds. It enables me to fish them crappie without getting tangled up. So don't make long, long casts, just little short ones. There's one right there. This one, guys. Ooh, that's a nice one, guys. There's a nice one right there. There's a good one. There's a nice one. Let's see if he'll stay on there. Oh, he's got a big mouth on him. Look at that, guys. There's a handful of crappie. Look at that one. Right in the lower lip. Look at that. That's what we're talking about right there. There's a slab, guys. Nice crappie. Beautiful iridescence on those fish. That's just a gorgeous fish right there. Beautiful, beautiful fish. All right, partner. Get you back in there. What do you think? That's what we're talking about, folks. <laughs> folks, this technique right here that we're using, you've seen me use it a hundred times. I don't need to explain it to you, the drop shot method. But you can use this spring, summer, and fall. And if you're a diehard bobber guy, you can come out here right now, bobber and jig, and catch a lot of fish doing that also. I just like doing it this way because I constantly know where I'm at off the bottom. I know where I'm at if I'm in weeds. When you throw out there with that bobber, see like right there, I was just pulling through some weeds. I could walk it right through there. With a bobber, that, that jig or, or whatever uh, bait you're using might get stuck up in those uh, sprouts coming up, the uh, cabbage uh, sprouts coming up, and you wouldn't even know it. With this drop shot, I can feel it. When I'm, when I'm jigging it and bringing it through, I can feel it snaking through that cabbage and crawling through those stems. So that's why I prefer to use this method, just because, right there, guys, see that? I just smacked it. Just because I know exactly what's going on underneath. There he is, guys, right there. There you go, guys. I fooled him back into it there. He was beating that thing up and came off and kind of left it down there and teased him with it and came back and got it. Boy, you got it good too, folks. There he goes, little fella. God, just beautiful colors in there. Awesome, all right, buddy. This week's product showcase brought to you by AXTackle.com. Tackle that will give you the edge. Oh, oh yeah! <laughs> Look at him, he's just sitting there. Oh, he's trying to shake it. Oh yeah, he's, oh, yeah. Good. he's yeah. good, he's good. Well, he inhaled that thing. Oh yeah. He Look at that. that. Oh, look at that thing, is totally, totally gone. Watch the motor, Chad. He just inhaled that thing. Look at that. Look at that bait all oh. the way in. <laughs> All right, careful, careful here. Oh, man. You want to grab the net, Chad? Let's see here, Chad, just a second. Swing him over. They just do it nice and gently. Look at that one right there, guys. There you go. <laughs> oh. Ow. Oh, oh, oh. Ah. See that right there, folks? I had a hold of that fish. Unfortunately, he took off and I gripped down and uh, it took him out as well as me. That's just part of the dangers of pike fishing. But uh, I, I, I feel more bad for this fish because I totally gilled him out. I did not want to do that, but he just freaked out on me and my hand got stuck inside of there and there was absolutely nothing I could do about that. Look at that fish, guys. Absolute beauty. He got, he got injured bad. Him, him and me, we're uh, not doing so good right now. So. 
we'll get that cleaned up and uh, we'll take him home. Pike is good eating. I don't like to eat fish this big, guys. I had no intention on hurting that fish, but you know, it just happens sometimes and he got away from me. We got a cradle net in the boat. I should have used it, but you know, you can't win them all. Beautiful fish though, Chad. Swim bait, Pike Ahoy, buddy. Awesome, awesome. Oh, there's one right there. Whoa, yeah. We need a big, big fish, but we'll take it. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, he's not a beast of a fish, but just be careful. <laughs> All right, careful, Chad. Let's grab the pliers here real quick. I'll show you this bait, folks. If you remember, right here. We made it without any bloodshed, buddy. Still hanging on the side. Not a big fish, guys, but fun nonetheless. Folks, I wanted to show you earlier the fish that we caught that, that big pike on, that about 15 pounder that Chad caught. But as you saw, my hand got totally mangled, and we had to take about an hour or so to get her uh, the bleeding to stop, let the rain pass. Just kind of it was a messy situation. But I want to show you this bait. This is a river to sea wood minnow. This is the smallie pattern, and as you can see, this bait has been just totally demolished. It's a high quality bait, guys, 30 layers of paint, and this thing's been catching pike for us all summer long, and you can tell, I mean, it's just starting to show its age. But what makes these so unique is one, they're jointed, and the second is this reverse paddle tail right here. And what happens, pike are notorious followers. They're coming up behind this bait. One, it looks like an actual fish swimming. Second, this tail is flapping like this, and when they come up behind it, they cannot resist that tail, and they just come up and smack it. So we're getting those followers to commit. This is the bait right here that we just caught that last fish on. Same bait, wooden minnow. This is just a golden shiner. But folks, if you're looking for a bait to get following pike to strike, you can't beat this river to see wooden minnow right here. Smallmouth pattern, they got rainbow trout pattern, quite a few different patterns. But I tell you what, next time you're going pike fishing, look these up, River to Sea, Wood and Minnow. Go to axtackle.com, several colors. One thing's for sure, folks, go catch you some big pike. Okay, folks, I think what I'm gonna do here, my bites are starting to slow down a little bit. I think the school's getting used to seeing these down there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pop these off, pop the whites off. And also, we're starting to lose a little bit of light, so what I'm going to do here, uh, come in here and I'm going to grab, I'm going to grab my chartreuse right here, and I'm going to gear up with the chartreuse. And there's two reasons why I go with the chartreuse, is one, just to give them a different color than what they've been seeing. They've been seeing that white down there now for about 45 minutes, and I'm starting to slow down on my strikes. So what I'm going to do, by going to this green, the reason why I'm going to the green too is because our light's starting to drop off and the sun's starting to go down. It's getting a little bit darker as you're probably able to see in the film there. And what happens, green and blue will pick up any little bit of ultraviolet light out there. And if you look at a color chart, um, you look at green and blue and they go down the deepest. You know, like green goes down to around 180 feet and then uh, blue goes, you know, past 250 feet. And if you talk to divers, they'll tell you when they get down there deep like that, blue is really the only thing they see. Well, with the green, we're not obviously 250 feet down. What this is gonna do is it's gonna show up a little bit better and it's gonna give them a color that they haven't seen yet. So let's see if they'll uh, start picking up a little bit more now that this has changed to green. There's one, guys, right there. Ooh, that feels like a nice one, guys. There we go. I was starting to get a little bit concerned that the green was only going to catch the smaller ones here. Swing him up here. Well, nothing wrong with that one, guys. That's a good one. And all I'm doing here, and it's tough for you folks at home to see, is all I'm doing is I'm just moving around this cabbage clump. This cabbage clump is probably, if I was a guest, it's about 30 yards across. It's a nice little crappie right there, guys. About 30 yards across, and all I'm doing is I'm just taking and moving around it in a circular circular fashion. And what's happening is these fish just kind of moving around within it. And that just keeps me staying on top of them. If I just stay on one side of it, off of an anchor, all of a sudden you'll not catch any more fish. 
So I'm going around, got my electric motor on 10, 20%, and um, right there, right there, guys, look at that. I just dropped it down and he hit it. I mean, I didn't even, I didn't even get it down in the water, guys. But I've got my electric motor on 10, 20%, 10 to 20% right in there, and uh, look at me. And I'm just motored around this thing really quiet. I don't like to throw anchors. And the reason being is you throw an anchor down there and it kind of disturbs everything. And that's a nice little crappie again. But the anchor will disturb everything. And, you know, an area this small, you toss an anchor down in there and you're going to spook those fish off. So I prefer to just go around with the electric motor and just be real stealthy and just keep kind of swinging around this cabbage bed here. And you can see, folks, it's, uh, it's working. We're catching some fish. There's one, guys. Oh, that one's good. That one feels good. That's a nice one, guys. He's not very long, but he's got he's got good weight to him. See that? See how he's? See that? Look at that. I got pretty big mitts on me too. He's uh he's thick. You can tell when you pull up on him, they start turning sideways too. You can kind of get an idea for for how big they are here. Hardly hang on to him there. Hang on, partner. Oh, he ate it up good. Dude, I don't want to hurt his mouth if I can avoid it here. Got that crappie smell. Boy, Bubba, you got it good. Grab my pliers here. He ate it up. He wanted that thing. guys right there on the fall little one little fella Isn't that amazing folks how these things just school up like this if you'd have been out here not more than three hours ago you'd have fished right here and you wouldn't even have got a bite little fella just got to be timing is everything folks and I, I do a lot of seminars and you know I'm always trying to uh, you know do instructional shows so you folks at home can go out and do this same thing because I just want everybody to go out and have a good time, catch fish. That's what it's all about. And one of the things that I always get is, you know, I have good luck and what people don't see is that I put in a lot of time to get that luck. I mean, we spend a lot of hours out here and what you'll find with fishing, timing is everything. And you can get out and force a bite. I mean, they're, they're always there. Um, they're always gonna eat. You just gotta make them eat. And, uh, but I can't tell you enough how important timing is. Just like this right here, last two hours of daylight, this is where it's at. You know, we just timed it up right to just show you folks at home how it works when it's timed right. So just keep that in mind. We do put in a lot of time to get these shows done. Um, this is kind of a fun one here because we're doing it real time for you. There we go, guys. Pull this fish in fast. We don't want that, that's a nice one too. We don't want our camera getting wet. Mickey will never uh, let me hear the end of it if we fry the camera. All right, folks, good crappie. Let's get that camera put away. Well, folks, with the rain subsided, we had to dry the camera off a little bit. We didn't want to destroy that bad boy, so let's see if we can't finish this thing out. It only rained for about 15 minutes, just so you know. Let's see what we can do here. I'll show you these baits here real quick. I gotta grab a couple anyway, so I'll go ahead and show you. They are, they're the, those are my natural color. They come in a few different colors. But they're the gulp, <clears throat> two inch fish fry, and this is the chartreuse color. But they come on a stem like this, right here. And then all you do is just take your fingernail, and I'm just gonna pop off a couple of them here, like so. And you just hook it up. And this gulp, guys, when it first came out, I wasn't a real huge fan of it, and I'll be honest, I, uh, it was a little bit brittle, not brittle, but it was, it didn't have much flex to it, let's put it that way. And you still have to keep it out of the sun. If you hook these up and it's hot out, within a matter of about, oh, 20, 30 minutes, they're gonna get hard and dry. So you kinda always gotta keep that in mind. But what's so nice about these 
is I don't run any bait, and I get that question a lot through emails, you know, or walleye fishing and stuff. I just, I don't use bait, and I don't have anything against it, and there's time when you have to use it. Um, but I typically try to use plastic that's scented like this Berkeley, and this gulp has an incredible amount of scent to it. So there's no worms, there's no maggots, there's no anything on there, just that gulp product right there. But those guys are just killing them. Let's get it back out there. That one looks good, guys. Oh yeah, there's a good one. Look at that one, folks. Look at that one. Look at there, guys. There's a slab for you. Holy smokes, folks, that is a big dog. Look at that one, guys. Boy, look at that. That's nine inches right there to give you an idea. Pinky to thumb. That fish is probably 13 inches. Look at how deep he is. What a beaut, guys. Can't believe it. Crappie out here after work. I'm still working. See you, buddy. There's one right there. There's one, guys. There we go. Well, folks, I tell you what, that's not the biggest fish of the trip, but I think it's a fish that we're going to call it a trip on. We're starting to run out of light with the camera. It's about, oh, 840, puts us almost two hours on the water with that fish back. I uh, want to encourage you folks, next time you have a bad day at work and you get off 536, pick up the boat, get out there, find those deep cabbage beds, relieve a little stress, catch us some crappie, using those little two inch fish fries. Well folks, I want to thank you for watching, look forward to seeing you next week.